Gluten is a protein that comes in certain grains, especially in wheat, that when one consumes it, the body digests it and breaks it down into peptides. Two of the famous peptides that gluten contains are gliadin and glutenin. Once these are absorbed, they cause damage to the body in different ways. Gliadin in itself attacks the cells of the lining of the intestines. And glutenin generates autoimmune reactions. So gluten these days is a hot topic because People are avoiding it and everybody thinks they're gluten sensitive. Some doctors say it is not so. There's gluten sensitive people called celiacs and they're very few in the general population. Other scientists are saying that up to 85% of the world's population is sensitive to gluten in one way or another. But you don't have to take anybody's word for it. My approach is this. Find out how gluten affects you personally. And the way that I instruct my patients to do that is by eliminating it for two to three weeks and then reintroducing it. That is the best way to see how gluten affects you specifically. The elimination diet is basically avoiding all the foods that are difficult to digest, that are mucus forming, acid forming, or have any other kind of toxic effect in our body. Gluten happens to be one of the ones that in my experience is very important for people to eliminate in order to achieve their best state of health and then reintroduce it to see if they can tolerate and how often they can tolerate it. Thinking that avoiding gluten is going to be the solution to our life if you continue to eat all the other toxic foods available is kind of an illusion. This goes together with everything else. So if you want to really find out how gluten affects you, it's not a matter of just cutting gluten and eating everything else. Trying the elimination diet in its entirety for three weeks is the ideal way to let your body reset and then be able to react to gluten once it's introduced on its own. So. It is important to do the elimination diet in its entirety to even realize how gluten affects you by itself. Once you completed the three weeks on the elimination diet, including gluten, if you want to see how gluten affects you personally, you reintroduce. The way to do that is eating gluten one, twice or three times a day for the first two days. And during that time, Watch really closely for different things. For example, how is your skin? How are your moods? How did you sleep last night? Did you get bloated? How are your bowel movements? There's many things that can give you a clue that gluten is not good for your body. And it's not necessarily the things that everybody knows about. So watch very closely to see how gluten affects you. If you reintroduce gluten for two or three days and nothing happens and you feel great, gluten is probably fine for you. But there's mild reactions, there's moderate reactions, and there's severe reactions. So if you reintroduce gluten and a couple of days later you realize you're not sleeping as well or you're getting a little bloated or gassy, well, that means that you are mildly intolerant to gluten and you would probably benefit from not eating it as much or as often. If those symptoms are worse, then you can conclude that you are moderately allergic or intolerant to gluten and therefore you should avoid it even more. But there's people that have really severe reactions and within five to 10 minutes of reintroducing gluten, they're sneezing and itching and bloated. And for those people, it's probably best to avoid it completely. Regardless of what your idea and understanding is about gluten, and even if you feel great, it is worth to try avoiding gluten for three weeks and then reintroducing it you may be surprised with what you find. An example of an unexpected finding for somebody I know is the following. 
This person was living with back pain for years, and he did not think this was related to any dietary issues. But he tried eliminating gluten and going on the elimination diet for three weeks, and his pain completely gone away. But once he reintroduced gluten, his back pain came back, and he realized the connection. So this is a very unexpected finding, and one that allowed this patient to get free of back pain by avoiding gluten. One of the arguments that I hear a lot is that we've been eating gluten for thousands of years, why is it an issue now? And I tell them the story about a patient in New York who was so um, intolerant to gluten that every time he ate it in any way or form, his scalp itched so much that by scratching it, he would make it bleed. So when he came to see me, he didn't even know that it was gluten that he was reacting to. And stopping gluten was like the mas magic solution for his problems. One day he called me from Italy and he said, doctor, this is crazy. I have been avoiding gluten for so long, but I'm in Italy and I couldn't help it. I had to eat a plate of pasta. And I said, so what happened? He said, nothing happened, not even an itch. And this then happened to several of my patients. While they were in Europe, gluten had no effect on them whatsoever. But in the United States, it was violent. My conclusion is that there has to be something with gluten and the way we grow our wheat and our grains in the United States, whether it's genetically modified organisms, the pesticides, insecticides, and fertilizers we're using, or something else that we don't know about. Gluten here is not the same as gluten around the world. Gluten is a hot topic these days, but the solution is not focusing on a gluten-free diet by consuming all these gluten-free products that the supermarkets are offering, which are loaded with sugar and chemicals such as coloring agents and all of that. Highly processed foods, even without gluten, can be really bad for you. Instead, I tell my patients to focus on a whole foods diet, including lots of vegetables and fruits and meats that are raised without any chemicals. That is what works best for them.